Hey guys, I have something really special to share with you. Um, it's out of the Master Key System. This is a book that really has changed my life throughout. And the first time I read it, it really, I really had a big shift in my consciousness and the different things that it did to the, the changing of my conception of myself and the assumptions I could make and grow from the actual foundational pieces that were laid out by Charles Honnell in this book. And I want to share with this, but I was, thinking, I was going to read it again to myself in its entirety. So I thought maybe I would just read it to you guys as well while I read it. So I thought this would be fun for everyone. And really, we should all, we will all get a lot out of this. And every time I do read this book, I get something new. And I'm going to go ahead and begin this now. Part one, out of the Master Key System by Charles Honnell. This is a book that was also featured in The Secret which um, that's actually where I, that's how I found it. I read The Secret and that's how I studied, when I studied that, the different authors that are, that were contained within The Secret, that's how I came across Charles Hanel. Okay, part one. It is my privilege to enclose herewith part one of the master key system. Would you bring into your life more power? Get the power of consciousness, more health? Get the health consciousness and more happiness? Get the happiness consciousness. Live the spirit of these things until they become yours by right. It will then become impossible to keep them from you. The things of the world are fluid to a power within man by which he rules them. You need not acquire this power. You already have it. But you want to understand it. You want to use it. You want to control it. You want to impregnate yourself with it so that you can go forward and carry the world before you. Day by day, as you go on and on, as you gain momentum, as your inspirations deepen, as your plans crystallize, as you gain understanding, you will come to realize that this world is no dead pile of stones and timber, but that it is a living thing. It is made up of the beating hearts of humanity. It is a thing of life and beauty. It is evident that it requires understanding to work with material of this description. But those who come into the understanding are inspired by a new light, a new force. They gain confidence and greater power each day. They realize their hopes and their dreams come true. Life has a deeper, fuller, clearer meaning than before. And now, I'm presenting part one. That much gathers more is true on every plane of existence, and that loss leads to greater loss is equally true. Mind is creative, and conditions, environment, and all experiences in life are the result of our habitual or predominant mental attitude. The attitude of mind necessarily depends upon what we think, therefore, the secret of all power, all achievement, and all possession depends upon our method of thinking. This is true because we must be before we can do. And we can do only to the extent which we are. And what we are depends upon what we think. We cannot express powers that we do not possess. The only way by which we may secure possession of power is to become conscious of power. And we can never become conscious of power until we learn that all power is from within. There is a world within, a world of thought and feeling and power, of light and life and beauty, and although invisible, its forces are mighty. The world within is governed by mind. When we discover this world, we shall find the solution for every problem, the cause for every effect. And since the world within is subject to our control, all laws of power and possession are also within our control. The world without is a reflection of the world within. What appears without is what has been found within. In the world with many or may be found infinite. Wisdom, infinite power, infinite supply of all that is necessary, waiting for unfoldment, development, and expression. 
If we recognize these potentialities in the world within, they will take form in the world without. Harmony in the world within will be reflected in the world without by harmonious conditions, agreeable surroundings, the best of everything. It is the foundation of health and a necessary essential to all greatness, all power, all attainment, all achievement, and all success. Harmony in the world within means the ability to control our thoughts and to determine for ourselves how any experience is to affect us. Harmony in the world within results in optimism and affluence. Affluence within results in affluence without. The world without reflects the circumstances and the conditions of the consciousness within. If we find wisdom in the world within, we shall have the understanding to discern the marvelous possibilities that are latent in this world within, and we shall be given the power to make these possibilities manifest in the world without. As we become conscious of the wisdom in the world within, we mentally take possession of this wisdom, and by taking mental possession, we come into actual possession of the power and wisdom necessary to bring into manifestations the essentials necessary for our most complete and harmonious development. The world within is the practical world in which the men and women of power generate courage, hope, enthusiasm, confidence, trust, and faith by which they are given the fine intelligence to see the vision and the practical skill to make the vision real. Life is an unfoldment, not an accretion. What comes to us in the world without is what we already possess in the world within. All possession is based on consciousness. All gain is the result of an accumulative consciousness. All loss is the result of scattering consciousness. Mental efficiency is contingent upon harmony. Discord means confusion. Therefore, he who would acquire power must be in harmony with natural law. We are all related to the world without by the objective mind. The brain is the, is the organ of the mind and the cerebral spinal system of nerves puts it in puts us in consciousness communication with every part of the body. This system of nerves responds to every sensation of light, heat, odor, sound, and taste. When this mind thinks correctly, when it understands the truth, when the thoughts send through the cerebral spinal nervous system to the body are constructive, these sensations are pleasant and harmonious. The result is that we build strength, vitality, and all constructive forces into our body. But it is through this same objective mind that all distress, sickness, lack, limitation, and every form of discord and inharmony is admitted to our lives. It is therefore through the objective mind, by wrong thinking, that we are related to all destructive forces. We are related to the world within by the subconscious mind. The solar plexus is the organ of this mind. The sympathetic system of nerves presides over all subjective sensations, such as joy, fear, love, emotion, respiration, imagination, and all other subconscious phenomena. It is thought, or it is though the subconscious that we are connected with the universal mind, and brought into relation with the infinite constructive forces of the universe. It is the coordination of these two centers of our being and the understanding of their functions, which is the great secret of life. With this knowledge, we can bring the objective and subjective minds into conscious cooperation and thus coordinate the finite and the infinite. Our future is entirely within our own control. It is not at the mercy of any capricious or uncertain external power. All agree that there is but one principle or consciousness 
pervading the entire universe, occupying all space, all being, essentially the same in kind in, at every point of its presence. It is all powerful, all wisdom, and always present. All thoughts and things within itself. It is all that it is all in all. There is but one consciousness in the universe able to think. And when it thinks, its thoughts become objective things to it. As this consciousness is omnipresent, it must be present within every individual. Each individual must be a manifestation of that omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent consciousness. As there is only one consciousness in the universe and is able to think it necessarily follows that your consciousness is identical with the universal consciousness. Or in other words, all mind is one mind. There is no dodging this conclusion. The consciousness that focuses in your brain cells is the same consciousness which focuses in the brain cells of every other individual. Each individual is but the individualization of the universal, the cosmic mind. The universal mind is static or potential energy. It, can, it simply is. It can manifest itself only through the individual, and the individual can manifest himself only through the universal. They are one. The ability of the individual to think and his ability to act on the universal and bring it into manifestation. Human consciousness consists only in the ability of man to think. Mind in itself is believed to be a subtle form of static energy from which arises the activities called thought, which is the dynamic phase of mind. Mind is the static energy. Thought is dynamic energy. The two phases of the same thing. Thought is therefore the vibratory force formed by converting static mind into dynamic mind. As the sum of all attributes are contained in the universal mind, which is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, these attributes must be present at all times in their potential forms in every individual. Therefore, when the individual thinks the thought is compelled by its nature to embody itself in an objectivity or condition which will correspond with its origin. Every thought, therefore, is a cause, and every condition an effect. For this reason, it is absolutely essential that you control your thoughts so as to bring forth only desirable conditions. All power is from within and is absolutely under your control. It comes through exact knowledge and by the voluntary exercises of exact principles. It should be plain that when you acquire a thorough understanding of this law and are able to control your thought processes, you can apply it to any condition. In other words, you will have come into conscious cooperation with omnipotent law, which is the fundamental basis of all things. The universal mind is the life principle of every atom, which is in existence. Every atom is continually striving to manifest more life. All are intelligent and all are seeking to carry out the purpose for which they were created. A majority of mankind lives in the world without. Few have found the world within and yet it is the world within that makes the world without. It is therefore creative and everything which you find in your world without has been created by you in the world within. This system will bring you into realization of power, which will be yours when you understand this relation between the world without and the world within. Your world within is the cause. The world without is the effect. To change the effect, you must first change the cause. You will at once see that this is a radically new new and different idea. Most men try to change effects by working with effects. They fail to see that this is simply changing one form of distress for another. To, remo to remove discord, 
we must remove the cause, and this cause can be found only in the world within. All growth is from within. This is evident in all nature. Every plant, every animal, every human is a living testimony to this great law. And the error of the ages is in looking for strength or power from without. The world within is the universal fountain of supply, and the world without is the outlet to the stream. Our ability to receive depends upon our recognition of this universal fountain, this infinite energy of which each individual is an outlet, and so is one with every other individual. Recognition is a mental process. Mental action is therefore the interaction of the individual upon the universal mind. And as the universal mind is the intelligence which pervades all space and animates all living things, this mental action and reaction is the law of causation. But the principle of causation does not obtain in the individual but in the universal mind. It is not an objective faculty, but a subjective process, and the results are seen in an infinite variety of conditions and experiences. In order to express life, there must be mind. Nothing can exist without mind. Everything which exists is some manifestation of this one basic substance from which, from which and by which all things have been created and are continually being recreated. We live in a, in a fathomless sea of plastic mind substance. The substance is ever alive and active. It is sensitive to the highest degree. It takes form according to mental demand. Thought forms the mold or matrix from which the substance expresses. Remember that it is in the application alone that the value consists and that a practical understanding of this law will substitute abundance for poverty, wisdom for ignorance, harmony for discord, and freedom for tyranny. And certainly there can be no greater blessing than these from a material and social standpoint. Now, Make the application. Select a room where you can be alone and undisturbed. Sit erect comfortably, but do not lounge. Let your thoughts roam where they will, but be perfectly still for from, from 15 minutes to a half an hour. Continue this for three or four days or for a week until you secure full control of your physical being. Many will find this extremely difficult. Others will conquer this with ease but it is absolutely essential to secure complete control of the body before you are ready to progress. Next week, you will receive instructions for the next step. In the meantime, you have mastered this one. All right, guys, chapter one out of the master key system. Really, really love this. I want your ideas on this. Leave them in the column box below what you think of how it goes over the from within and without and consciousness, how we can't affect life from without. Everything is from within. And it kind of goes back to what Neville Goddard teaches about everything is within and pushed out. It's us pushed out. So he's going over the same basic, but it's a little bit different. And I want to know your thoughts on this in the comment box below, guys. And I will be working on chapter two very soon. Love you guys.